All right, welcome back to the podcast. Derek Sanchez, my friend, is joining me on the podcast. We're going to talk all things pizza and business. I love talking to people from the pizza community. Derek was one, someone that was suggested quite a few times from people, so it's finally we got the chance to sit down, talk, record a podcast, and I'm excited to welcome him to the show. So, Derek, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today. Yeah, man, thank you for the invite. I'm honored. So this is cool. I'm excited. You were, someone said you were like the scientists of dough. Is that true? Uh, I don't know, man. You know, I, I dig in a little bit, so or a lot, or to some people, it's a, it's insane. But um, you know, I I love science. It's my background. So, yeah, I love know, it because I followed you on Facebook and on Instagram, and I see you doing like these experiments, or I'll see you comment on somebody's post about hydration levels. And you know, I've been in the pizza business for a long time, but I never really dug deep into like that whole process of making dough and all of the chemicals. Right. Not necessarily chemicals, but like the 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 way you go about actually making dough and the fermentation, just kind of like you did it, right? It was just a process that you did over and over and over right, again. Right. But I love that now that I'm, I'm learning more about that, I'm fascinated by people who have done the research and like have the knowledge and I, I have a platform where we can come on the show and just talk about it. So I'm excited to talk to you about that. Yeah, man, it's, uh, it's been a journey. It started, uh, I think this thing started about 2005. Um, I started digging into pizza and I got tired of, looking around this area for good pizza yeah man i we got to make my own and i grew up with a certain flavor that was really awesome an italian family moved here from up north and they had a pizzeria and then um i ended up moving away and i lost that pizza uh and so i always kind of chased that flavor down but anyhow man i really got into the i, I used what i've learned in the science field uh, as far as research as research is concerned and i and i applied that to researching pizza um, a lot more difficult with pizza because there's no double blind cohort studies on pizza, man. So, what is that exactly? Okay. So that's, that's like the gold standard of a study. So when I say that, what that is, is like a, a double blind means you have two groups that are blind to a study. They're going through it and you can uh, accumulate your results or your data without people knowing. And then they're, they're providing information for you to find out how good or how uh, solid this study is so it's both accurate and sensitive and specific so they go in it with no hidden agenda no man no it's it's really just you know uh as far as pizza is concerned man you have to travel so we yeah. did um if i heard there was a good pizza place we're getting in a car and airplane and we're flying and me and my wife would just go everywhere eating all this pizza and i got i got pretty big dude eating all that pizza stuff. <laughs> i hear you man it's, it's tough a love of mine bro it's a love of mine the pizza i love it so I love it too, man. And it's hard because like, you know, even though, especially like when you go to the expos or any of those places or you visit friends who own pizzerias, like right. you can't, as much as you say to yourself, all right, I'm only going to have two pieces or one piece or whatever it is. You can't do that. It's like rude. Like if you go to a friend's pizzeria and they're there, um, I went to, so here's an example. I went to pizzeria Bruno. My friend Bruno owns a pizzeria in Orlando, pizzeria Bruno. And I went there and I don't like when people give me free stuff. Like I don't go there for that reason. I want to pay for my meal. I want to order off the menu and I want to just have the experience, whether I know the person or not. Gotcha. And I went there and I ordered like a couple pizzas for me and my family. And then he sends over like all of this extra stuff. And I'm like, oh, I feel horrible not eating it. So like you sit there, you just eat it all till yeah. you feel sick. Yeah, I think it's in our nature, man. I have a lot of people come to the pizzeria. You know, we're in a food truck. We're transferring. We're 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 building the pizzeria as we speak. Actually, I just came from there. So yeah, uh, we're uh, people come and visit, man. And we just want to, you know, share the joy, man. Like try this and try yeah, to know. about what we do. You know, we're not thinking of the money, dude. We're like, man, we want you to have this. We want you to enjoy it. We just made this for you. And you know, the the passionate guys in this business. Do we, you know, we have to think about the money because of the business side of it. Right. Man, we're, we're all about the pizza, dude, in every aspect of it. So. Yeah, I, I definitely appreciate it. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I do appreciate no, when they yeah. send the stuff over. But um, I sometimes go in there with the intention. Like, I'm, I'm feeling a little not that hungry today or I'm not, not super hungry. Maybe I eat just a, or maybe I ate a big meal yesterday. I should watch what I'm eating today. But then it just goes out the window. Oh, yeah. Some people's pizza, I'll cram in, dude. It's so good. <laughs> yeah. On, keep you know, you have a good slice, so just keep bringing it, baby. Keep bringing it, man. Suffer later. Get on a treadmill for three hours later. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that is also true. Work it off. How, man. how did you get started, like, in the pizza industry? Um, uh, it started, you know, at my home and just starting to read and research. Just uh, I started researching pizza makers, and ultimately it led me to bread bakers. I mean, that's what we're yeah. doing. We're making bread, right? So, um, 
just just a passion to want to make great pizza at home and that's what we did we started making pizza at home i started in ovens i broke three or four of them in my wife's <laughs> oven you know and, uh, and then i started buying commercial pizza ovens and i had a pretty big garage at the time so um, at one time we had eight commercial pizza ovens in the garage and i'm testing these ovens right like what kind of ovens uh, I had a, let's see, we had two Marsals in there. We had a Baker Pride Electric. I had a Baker <laughs> Pride, a Blodgett, um, I, I think a 9810 Blodgett. We had a Peerless in there. Um, Full size? Four, yeah. Uh, well, the, the, the Blodgett was a little bit skinnier one. And then we had a Marsal 42 in there and a 60. So we had a kind of the smaller one and a bigger one. I mean, man, I just, I would see them and buy them. And then, you know, figure out which one I liked and sell them. So I'd always tell my wife, look, ah, I'm there you go. Sell them. Where our garage isn't going to, you know, you can park your car in there here. Yeah, in a few yeah. months. Let me finish testing these things. So, well, I mean, I've, I've heard of people putting like a wood fired oven in the back. Yeah. I've never heard anybody. Put, yeah. Like, yeah. We, we built wood fired. Commercial ovens. One. We, we messed with green eggs. I've built the, I don't know the, this thing it's called like a black egg. Yeah. Um, where they take a, uh, like a barbecue pit you know, a dome barbecue pit and they cut holes in it. We did yeah. all that, man. So I've made and built ovens and bought ovens and tested. And, you know, we started doing that stuff. And then um, uh, we were just, I was just testing experiment, recording all my stuff, writing down all my stuff until I started narrowing down what I thought was really good pizza. You know, and I've turned some corners, meeting people in the business, meeting yeah. people in the industry. Um, I go online one time and uh, it was a thing say, hey, you know, there's a pizza tour in New York and it's run by Scott Wiener. And I, you know, I didn't know Scott. I said, no, look at this thing. They go around and I said, yeah, let's go sign up for this. So uh, me and my buddies went to New York and we were there for six days, five days and ate pizza for four days straight. Right. I'm <laughs> from when I wake up to when I go to bed and we try to hit as many pizzerias as we could. I'm taking notes, talking to owners, you know, and, and then uh, we go on this tour and what do we do? We eat pizza all day. Right. So Scott gave me a couple pointers. I come home, you know, we added in and I mean, just to the accumulation of information over 15 years, you know, we've kind of come to where we are now and it's yeah. always changing. We're always working on it, man. So. Yeah. It's something that never, like, especially when it comes to like the dough, it's, it's something that never is finished. You're always trying to make it a little bit better every day. Dude, we just tweaked ours a little bit this week. Ooh, so you have a, uh, you started with the food truck. Is that what I heard you say? Yeah. Started, we started in the house It moved to my garage. We were, serving uh, uh, people in the community in our neighborhood, 60, 70 pizzas a weekend. My wife says, dude, you got to get out of here, man. <laughs> were you I, just doing that because you were testing it out and like you had all these extra pizzas and you just wanted to get Yeah, them and everybody's getting free pizza. Then people started giving us money for it, right? Yeah. You know, because they're like, oh, I feel bad, dude. Let me give you 10 bucks. We're like, yeah, whatever. You know, we'll, we'll just like do whatever. It, it was That's this awesome. Passion. It was this passion project, man. It really was. And then uh, it started getting really good. Then the word started getting out. So we were having people from different neighborhoods and people from different areas coming to our house to get pizza. We have a line in front of our house to pick up pizza, man. Wow. Was this like a certain day of the week that you did it on or like, how did they find out about it? So yeah, I'm a clinician. I'm in the clinic. I'm still in the clinic. Um, and in my background, for those that don't know, I'm a physical therapist, uh, spine and joint guy and I have a PhD in research. So, but the, the, um, people were coming to the house that were finding out about it. We were kind of selling it, giving it away, most of the time selling it. Um, and then, uh, you know, I said, hey, man, we got to let's turn it into a business. And then Joey, the guy, a lot of people out there know Joey. He's, he's my sidekick. He's like my brother. We grew up together. Uh, he was in the food industry for about 25 years or so. And he said, hey, man, let's do a food truck. I said, man, let's roll. So we opened up the food truck. And uh, now, man, we have up to three hour waits for pizza, man. So, wow. Uh, you know, it's good stuff. Winning the winning at the expo, winning a couple of championships, that always helps. It gets a lot of press. So, uh, which adds into your marketing, right, Bruce? So it, yeah, you know, we'll know, talk about that. Helpful. Yeah. We'll, we'll get into that. Cause I have some questions about that. So when you first started your pizza truck, um, was it, did you go to like a specific place or did you just go wherever there was people? So the culture here, I mean, we did a little bit of both at the first, uh, you know, at the beginning. Yeah. But I think the culture here and, and knowing people's habits, humanly habits, is they like going to a spot and they like to be consistent, right? Yeah. So we ended up parking at my buddy's doctor's office in his parking lot. And it had some exposure because it was right off the road. So people found out about it. It was this underground pizza thing, kind of like a secret pizza slice. Or, you know, we were kind of hidden like Vince Rotolo was hidden at first, you know? Yeah. 
And so it was kind of a fun thing for people. They would come in and find us and we'd get pretty busy then. Wow. Uh, now we moved right off a of main area where we have, man, hundreds of thousands of vehicles see us as they're driving by, man. So uh, it's, that's not only helped us, but like I said, also the, you know, some of the marketing stuff we do has helped us. So that's great. What kind of pizza do you serve? Like what style? We, we serve a classic New York style pizza, thin, crispy, and foldable. I love it. That's my favorite style. I think I love to actually, you know, I'm on a Detroit style kick right now. So it's going to be tough between Detroit style and New York style. But I think between those two, I could eat either one of those every single day. Dude, I love those pizzas. They're, we're going to do Detroit when we get the big ovens in. And uh, we'll do probably four styles of pizza. We'll do New York. We'll do Detroit. And then we're going to do a Roman. Oh, and yeah. We'll do, and we're going to do some grandma's, which is a lot like the Detroit, just a little bit different. I haven't had too many Roman style pizzas. I think there's one place around here I talked on the podcast, Mortadella Head. Uh, they're in Somerville here in the Boston That's area. A cool they have, name. Yeah, they have a, a, a Roman style pizzeria, but I haven't been there too many times, just one time. Yeah, it's uh, the characteristics of that dough is fascinating to me. It's delicious dough, right? Yeah. Uh, the ferment process is really cool. You get this light, airy crust. It's kind of like a croissant. Uh, it's It's a phenomenal crust, man. You can do all different kinds of stuff with it. So I mean, I love any kind of pizzas, to be honest with yeah. you. There's no style I don't like. Yeah. Even yeah, Greek style. Have you had Greek style, which is like a pan style pizza here in the New England? Where are you originally from? No, I grew up in South Texas. I grew up in Texas. Okay, so you're from Texas. So, you, yeah. so you've gone to like Northeast for you is New York. Yeah. Yeah. So you, if you come to Boston, there's a lot of Greek. There's a big Greek culture in the Boston area. And a lot of them in the, in the 80s bought pizzerias like roast beef. Have you heard of like Boston style roast beef? I have, but I haven't had it. All right. It's really good. If you come to Boston, you got to get a roast beef. Sandwich. I will. They have roast beef slash pizzerias. And to make it easy on the pizzeria, they do this pan pizza, but it's not like a square Detroit style pan. It's like, it's like if they took a New York pizza and put it in a circle pan and cooked it in a conveyor oven, that's like Greek style pizza. All right. So it kind of fries the bottom that has a crispy texture and a soft inside. Yes, exactly. Everybody loves that texture, man. Yeah. So that's like another style that the Northeast is kind of not, I don't want to say it's popular, but it's, it's well known in the Northeast right. area that they have Greek style pizza. And even that pizza, like, that's probably a style of pizza that if you eat two or three slices, you know, you're going to feel like you ate two or three slices. It's yeah. not like going to sit well. Whereas yeah. if you have like good dough, Neapolitan or New York style or Roman style, right. you could eat a lot of that and you're not going to feel heavy after. Right. If it's fermented correctly, your gut loves it. Yeah, right? true. Our gut loves fermented foods, man. Sauerkraut, pickles, fermented breads. So it's really healthy for your gut as well. So. How often are you making dough? Do you still make dough at home? Uh, we have a lab we make dough in. So it's a, we built a lab and that we make dough in. So um, we, I still make dough at home all the time because I'm doing different stuff with it. I'm experimenting, yeah. uh, digging into different ferment styles, you know, starter cultures, all that stuff. I mess with it all the time. So it's like my guitar playing. Some people go and play guitar. I come, everybody's in bed at night. Here I am in the kitchen working on, you know, looking at stuff under a microscope, seeing how stuff ferments. <laughs> That's uh, you cool. Know, it's, it's kind of my, it's kind of my thing. I really enjoy it. So I've been trying to get, I talked to Anthony Falco on a podcast a while ago and he got me into like doing starter, which I've never done before. I've, this is yeah. the first year I've really decided to make a starter. So wow. I've been experimenting with dough with starter and keeping my starter going and like starting a new one. And it's something that I've never done before, even though I've been in the pizza business my whole life. It's never, it's always like, I always use yeast. I never used the starter before. Yeah. I think, you know, it's just uh, what you're doing with starters, you're adding time to your dough, right? You're adding an extra day or an extra 15 hours, which adds bacterium and it adds more yeast to it. And um, that's, that's really where you get your flavor in the bread. So, you know, that, that extra stuff. So Falco's right with that stuff. You know, you add time, you add flavor, yeah. you add bacterium and extra yeast and you get a beautiful structure, beautiful flavored dough. I, it's time consuming though, right? Like I've realized that uh, first of all, I suck at it. That's what I've really learned. Second of all, it takes a lot of time because you spend a lot of time like building that starter over days. And then if you use it and it didn't come out that great, like that's a whole week or two gone. That's right, man. But, uh, you know, good food takes time. True. I haven't perfected it yet. I haven't like, I don't want to say perfected it, but I haven't <laughs> even like got it close to being. So, so I have to ask you this because what's perfect. I think <laughs> for me, perfect is like, if I make a pizza and mm -hmm. everyone in my family says, oh man, that was great. Like to me, that's good. Yeah. It never happened yet. Everybody's yeah, like, hey, there's it, always it, one it, person that's like, meh. We'll, we'll talk to you about ferments and cultures and you know, man, that, that bread will start giving a flavor. It'll blow you away. 
Yeah, I haven't blown anybody away yet. That's what I said. That's what you I will. Did. You will do for sure. I'm we'll still working about. on it. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. All the time. <laughs> I love it. All the time, dude. So in your area is like your, so you're re- very into like the bread making and the dough and the sauce, yeah. I'm sure. Is that what people are used to in your area or is that something new to them? So that's a great question, man. My, my, uh, so I'm a tester and a retester. It's just, you know, how I've been trained. So the food truck we, we put up as a test before we open a pizzeria. Yeah. I said, man, let's see if this culture, these people around here like this kind of pizza. You know, I mean, they're used to fast food pizza. They're used to, you know, Papa John's and their, you know, high sugar contents, you know. Yeah. Um, high addictive stuff. They're used to that kind of thing. So let's see if they dig this pizza. This pizza is more simple. We really love simple and beautiful, man. Let the, let the pizza do the work, let the flavors do the talk. Right. Yep. Um, so we started doing it and man, it would, you know, it, it blew them away. They were like, dude, nothing around here is like this. Nobody does this. What, what these guys do, you know, so the word kind of started to spread and you see people on Facebook and Instagram, they just started talking about our pizza and that's what we wanted, Bruce. We didn't want to, you know, and, and I'm not knocking anybody here, but there's a lot of people that they're, they're show and go on Facebook and on everywhere you see, man, and they do this and do that. And as soon as you go put their pizza in their mouth, they're like, ah, you know, <laughs> this, is, yeah, this is this is okay, whatever, you know? Yeah. And then I think that's even worse, you know, because we don't, you know, we don't want to sell a lie. We wanted to just be very, very good, man, at what we were doing. And, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's very, it's, it's easy to, make your pizza look good nowadays, right? Like, because there's a lot of apps and filters that you can use if you use Facebook or Instagram. It can make your pizza look really good, but does it actually taste good? That's the key. Man, dude, and you can, like, you can take a pizza and make it look beautiful, right? Oh, yeah. But as soon, you know that, too. As soon as you put that thing in your mouth, you're like, ah, I think I'd rather have, like, some Little Caesars or something. You know? <laughs> That's for sure. I mean, I had a lot of horseshit pizza that looked really good. Yeah, yeah. So our focus even to this day, as I'm talking to you, dude, is, is perfecting or just making phenomenal pizza. Uh, we really trying to make some of the best pizza in the world. It's a passion of ours and let the pizza do the talking to you. You know, do I don't want to be crazy. Go ahead. Do you use any, like a, a specific f- kind of flour or uh, in a brand that you're comfortable t- talking about? Yeah, man. So we, we've, we've done it all, man. You know, I, I, we lean towards Caputo. Yeah. Um, it's a, we don't want to talk about our blends or anything, but man, Caputo flour, just the passion they put into their work uh, just really stands out in our product. So, um, and, and that's who we tend to choose, man, that we want really passionate people behind the products. And that really comes out in the pizza, right? People that are really passionate about like tomatoes, you know, they're putting it forward. People that are passionate about the flour, putting it forward. Those are the guys we use because, uh, over the past 15 years, we're finding out that the people that are passionate about their product and, and we just get better product, we get better results or better outcomes. Yeah. It's the same so, with the yeah. pizza pizzas, right? Like the people who, the pizzerias who are passionate about, like you making a good, uh, the process is like what you're passionate about right. in the end result. Those are the places that have better pizza. That's it, man. And, and I'm, you know, I, I'm still researching. I don't know, you know, in the, in the business side of it, I'm still a rookie, man. So I'm learning and I'm still learning from people. And, and you know, what are we going to do? If we're making 600 pies a night, how are we going to get a five-day ferment? Right. right? What are we going to do? And, um, you know, are we going to, am I going to bend backwards to get that? And, and knowing myself, I will. I'll find a way to do it. You know, I'll go, I'll go rent a storage facility and, and build a walk-in cooler there. I was just going to say, I, you need a big walk-in for that. Yeah. And, and I'll do what it takes. And, and a lot that's of dough trays. A lot of dough trays, a lot of cans, dough trays, whatever it takes. Yeah. And that's the way we've been. We've had a philosophy. I certainly have had a philosophy like we're going to do what it takes to make some of the best in the world. I don't, you know, the cost to me, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed on that side. I don't care. Let's do what it takes to make what is some of the best in the world. So we've, we've had that philosophy since day one. So that's been our focus, man. It really has. And I like that. You know what? And people always ask me, Bruce, like, how can I stand out? And like having that philosophy is going to make you stand out. Yes, you can use Instagram and Facebook and all the tools to kind of get the message out there, which you should, I'm sure you do. But that right there is the hard part. Like making sure that your product is so superior and and really, really good that when people do come into your restaurant or pizzeria and they try your pizza, it's going to be completely 
10 times better than they've had anywhere else. And that's the hard part. It's easy to get somebody to come into your business and try it once. It's hard right. to get them. To, it's hard to like blow them away and make them be like, Oh my God, this is the best pizza ever and share it yeah. with 10 of their friends. And I've listened to you enough on these podcasts and, and on these, on these meetings to know, um, you know, I've learned from you and I appreciate that. And that's exactly what you say all the time. Like I can, our hook is like, Hey, we won a world championship, right? Oh, let's go try it. But the thing is, is once you put that pizza in your mouth, we want you like, holy crap. That's what gets people to come back time and time again. It's no wonder they won, people. right? No wonder these guys win. You know, it's it's man, this is awesome. And then I want them to completely forget about anything we've ever won and think about what they just ate, man, and, and keep coming back and feed their family with it, you know? So that's a big thing to us. I love it. And you just recently won, well, not, well 2019, you won the Caputo Cup, right? Yeah, I'm undefeated since 2017, bro. <laughs> Are you really? <laughs> no, yeah, I won a I won a Caputo Cup in 17. You got to skip a year though, right? What's that? Do you have to skip a year for the same category? You can't go back to back. Yeah, can I you? can't go back. Yeah. And then, um, and then I, you know, I got into I got into kind of the Roman style uh, pizza. I I, uh, I was working on it. I was reading about it and working on it before I went to the 2017 Caputo cup. And then, so I went to 2017 Caputo cup and then uh, the Roma pizza school was there. Uh, Massimiliano and, and Justin Piazza were there and they yeah. I had a slice and I go, man, this is, this is gorgeous, man. Just the ferment. I was more like, I wanted to taste that ferment of it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, How do you like it? It's fluffy. I'm like, yeah, it's cool. But the ferment flavor is awesome. Right. So, you know, I came back and, and really worked on it for about a year and I was going to go to his school. Um, but I didn't do it. Um, you know, I had some back problems and stuff. I had to have had some surgeries and shots and stuff. So I didn't go, but then I, I, <laughs> I came back, uh, and worked on this dough that they had. And then I won, yeah, in 2017. So I won the Caputo cup in 2017. I came back and just started right away working on Roman pizza dough. And then I ended up going to their school at the end of 2018. And then I entered at expo. And uh, I won the Roman at Expo. In 2019? In 2019. And then I go to the Caputo Cup and won the gluten-free. Uh, what year? Uh, 2019. So they haven't really had any competitions. Right. So 2017, I won. And then uh, the, the World Championship there. Uh, nine, 18, or 19 at Expo. And then 19 at, at, uh, at the Caputo Cup again for the gluten-free. In all three different categories. Yeah, my goal is to take them all down. <laughs> that's, that's fantastic. What was your first one? Traditional? Traditional. I just made a cheese pizza. Nice. That's what I love. I love that. I was a judge. Um, I think I was a judge in one of the competitions. And I was like, there was a traditional category. But everybody was kind of putting, like, I think in traditional category, you can use a couple of toppings, right? It's right. like a certain amount of toppings, like a certain variety yeah. of toppings you can so, use. Two toppings. No, yeah. So. No one did a cheese pizza. I was like, why isn't someone just this traditional? Just bring a nice perfectly done cheese pizza i'm not sure why nobody did that but that's all i compete with and i yeah. and i do it on purpose i do it to challenge myself you know because i think it's it's really hard to win with a cheese pizza right yeah um, just because you have different judges man and it's just you know so um to construct something so simple so beautiful and perfect ferment and for them to eat a cheese pizza and just go oh crap that's crazy yes that's my goal so when i compete um, it's, it's almost always, if it's in traditional, it's almost always just with a cheese pizza. Yeah. I think that's the way to go. And I think there's different varieties of pizzerias, right? And I think right. my original thinking on thought process on this was if I can't try your cheese pizza and it blow me away, I don't want to try anything else. That was my original thing. But then I'm like, you know what? There's certain other pizzerias whose like brands are these, uh, I don't want to say gimmicky, but they're like different styles of pizza. Like that's what yeah. they are known for. And I'm like, all right, I'll give them a shot. Like maybe that's not, they're not going for that New York traditional cheese pizza. That's not right. their thing. But if you are a New York style pizzeria, like if you are saying on your menu or you serve a traditional or a New York style pizza, better try your cheese pizza and it better be the best out of any pizza you have. Yeah. So for 15 years, I traveled around eating cheese pizza only. Cause my goal was to make the best cheese pizza in the world. If you can make the best cheese, you can put it whatever you want on it. It's awesome. Yes. Who's right? some of your favorites? Oh man. You know, I have a, there, there's oh man, dude. Um, standout pizzas, you know, I have to put you on the spot or anything. No, no, I'm good, man. I'm good. I don't, I don't care about politics. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. 
and love me or hate me, I'm going to speak the truth, bro. I don't right. care. Right. Um, uh, I like, you know, Defara's always stands out my mind. Totono's. Yeah. You know, they'll stand out my mind. Um, other times I've had, I've had a John Arena's cheese pizza, you know, blows me away. Uh, uh, Nino Coniglio's pizza, man. Some of that, some of that's just awesome pizza. Some of the stuff he does. Uh, Tony Gimignani, of course. Uh, yep. Some of my buddies, uh, Tony Troiano makes great pizza. I mean, I could go on, dude. So I've had their pizza, not in their environment too. Like a lot of these I've had at shows. Oh yeah. I yeah. can't imagine how good it is at, in their environment when they're, you know, they know their ovens, they know, their environment so you know i, I it just ups the level uh, yeah, laura you, myers laura meyer dude's pizza just yes. some of the stuff dude it's crazy it's hard because like you said at this shows you're not making like it shows how good of a skill you have putting it together because you're it's sometimes tough, you're making man. your dough in your hotel room you know yeah. you're you're prepping in the morning for a pizza you're making in the afternoon you're totally out of your element and out of your environment it's, a, it's tough not to easy do, to right? do yeah, yeah. Uh, so the, I got to throw Audrey Jane in there, right? Yes. I, I went out to Colorado and had her slice. And I was like, man, you know, I've eaten a lot of slices in a lot of places, buddy. This stuff is, it's done right. So, I mean, there's, there's so many good slices. I've had so many, dude. There's so many good ones. And, and I've had way more bad ones, though. <laughs> I agree with you. I feel like the best ones that I've had, and listen, a disclaimer to put out there is I know there's a lot of people who have been on the podcast and I've met. And I enjoy what they do online. I haven't been to their place yet. So there's right. a lot. Let me just put that out there. But of the places that I've been to, I'd say the best cheese pizza, just plain cheese pizza, like regular New York style plain cheese was probably Scar's Pizza. It was oh, right I up there. Scars. Yeah, I got to mention Scar's. And then Linda Street, dude. Yes. I haven't been there yet. I've been close. Oh, I've been to Best I, Pizza, Frank Pinello's place. He has a pretty good cheese slice Yeah, Best well. Pizza. I've had a great cheese slice from him yeah. too. I mean, they're, like I said, man, I'm not – you guys listen out there. Don't, don't think I haven't had, you know, your pies and don't think you're awesome. It's just, it take, I'll probably eat up this whole podcast if I say, you know, what's some of the standouts. So yes. You know, yeah. Pinello's place is good, man. Um, uh, I'll, I'll just, I can mention a lot of people. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like it's hard because there's so many people out there that are doing amazing uh, pizza but I just haven't had the chance to visit them yet because they're all over the country. And like, I don't know, I don't, I don't necessarily ever take, what people do at pizza shows as great or bad just because i know that they're out of their element you know what i mean uh, yeah someone could have an off day and and, and i'm not I'm, I'm a worst pizza snobs right so <laughs> yeah true we we get this man and we get a certain flavor we get a certain ferment we know the work behind it and uh cool story is i was talking with john arena at the at the expo 2019 and i had to run over to the to another, I guess, where we were competing. And on the way, the run over there, I saw Lee Hunsinger. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he had a square pie there. And I said, dude, I got to get some of Lee. I understand his work. And I took a bite of it. And I'm like, oh, brother, that's, you know, I want to give you a hug, dude. That's, I know the work behind this thing. And it was just a cheese, square slice, kind of like a, a little bit thicker than a grandma, maybe, or, you know, Sicilian style, but not soft, nice and crispy. And I still remember that slice, man. It was just phenomenal. So, I think he won last year, didn't he? For he won he one won of the cup, and he, yeah. and he used and and uh, he used that same crust probably that I had. And I was like, man, dude, that's that's a beautiful, beautiful. He, he's one of the guys I've never had his pizza myself. I mean, I might have had it at a competition, but I don't remember. Yeah. Um, but he definitely does a great job of showcasing what he does online. Like if you go to his Instagram handle, his pizzas look amazing. And dude, they don't only look amazing; they taste amazing. Yeah. No, oh, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, true. They, look, they taste better than they look. Most of those things. So shout out to Lee on some of that stuff. And he's a Texan; he's my boy up the street. So oh, is he? Oh yeah, he's from. He's in Dallas area, right? He's only like six hours up the street, but he's still up the street here. Yeah, in yeah, yeah. <laughs> he opened a new place recently, I think. Oh, well, I don't know if it was this year or last year. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not educated on what they've done, but is it Zoli's? I think they have. Yes. Zoli's, right? Yep. Yeah, he's doing square over there, and I think they're doing plenty of rounds. And then and, uh, Lee's doing it right, man. I mean, they, they got it going on, dude. You know. What, so are you? Th you said you were opening your a brick and mortar now. Is that what I heard you say? Yeah, we're working. On, I was there yesterday, man. I've been building tables and tiling, and you know, I I grew up kind of doing that stuff and helping contractors. And uh, so we're we're we have this old home. I think this home was built in uh, nineteen nineteen. It's this old farm home uh, right off the side of the highway. Uh, and, uh, so we're kind of redoing the inside, still leaving the old fireplace and the wood floors and adding some subway tile, kind of New York it up a little bit. It's a yeah, really yeah. beautiful place. 
Um, we're going to be 20% inside seating, 80% outside. We're going to have this real pretty outside area to sit. Um, and we're going to make pies, man. Just real simple pies, a couple salads, beer and wine, and uh, have a good time. Where you are, can you be outside all year round? Pretty much, dude. I mean, we're, you know, Texas has two seasons, hot and cold. <laughs> we don't have seasons here, dude. So right now we call this the cold weather. It's like 49 outside and everybody's, you know, I'm cold. So yeah. How, how long is it like that for until when? A couple months, dude. And then February, March it starts to warm up again? Starts warming up, yeah. So it, it, when are you opening that location? I'm trying to get this thing open in three months. Really? Like in March? I'm going to try, man. We're hustling. So we're, you know, when I'm not in the clinic, I'm there working. So um, I miss my family. <laughs> yeah, right. I want to, yeah, I'm, I'm working my butt off. And I know there's more of that to come, but, you know, we got to, we got to train some good staff and train them up right and teach them how to do some of this stuff. So, and that's going to be a New York style pizzeria similar to your pizza, your truck? That's going to be what we do, man. What we've won with, what we do good. And, uh, you know, it's going to be good. That's amazing. That's awesome. You went from kind of making pizza out of your house to a food truck, oh, making pizza out of your garage food truck now a brick and mortar that's kind of a lot of people that i've talked to on the podcast have kind of gone that route yeah we just let this thing grow itself how long yeah. when did you when was the first time you like what was the first time you made pizza at your house uh 2005 and a half so since 2000 so 15 years so it's not like it's like two years yeah i've had you know a lot of people i've talked to you know peter reinhardt or whatever they talk yeah say, well, you're new on the scene i said yeah but i've been making pizza 15 years right so it's I am. I'm really new on the on the and the pizza world side of it. I didn't even know the expo existed, man. I was I was stuck in reading and research. I kind of knew it did, you know, but um, and then I got invited to go and I went and it was it was really cool. A lot of knowledge, man. Get a lot of learning there, and it would have saved me years of study probably if I would have just went there first. Yeah, but it wouldn't have been as fun. True that. True that. And, and, yeah, and I wouldn't have made as many mistakes as I've made, and I think that's where you learn. Yes, and the community is great though. You can probably reach out to somebody at any point in time and ask anybody a question. And they're, they're more than I, I text daily. We're all, I'm texting and answering questions and people answer my questions and you know, awesome community, man. Nick Bogats, you know, Tony, yeah. Tony will answer anything anytime. I got like 10 Tonys I can text, bro. It's awesome. <laughs> That's true. There's <laughs> you know, a lot of them in the community. I got to be careful what Tony I'm texting. Cause you know, like, yeah, I got to make sure double check that name. Yeah. I got 10 Tonys. I should just put them all on one list. You know, Tony there you go. Me. <laughs> whoever responds first what's you get up, to t? use that question yeah, yeah what's up t y'all doing all right that's awesome well, Derek. it was amazing talking to you i don't want to take too much of your time but where can people go say hello to you or if they want to reach out to you online where should they go yeah they can you know they like my facebook uh man i've been on there i've been poor on it lately i haven't been on it too much but uh, i'm Derek sanchez on facebook and then you can find me at mia marcos or you can email me at me marcos pizza at gmail.com you can uh, call me at me and marcos pizza 210-659 or excuse me, uh, uh, you can call me there, 659-4333. We got all kinds of ways you can contact me. And Mia Marco's Pizza on Instagram as well, right? Mia Marco's Pizza on Instagram. My wife does all that stuff. She's really good at it. Like yeah, Instagram looks good. and Facebook. Yeah, Vince, I was talking to Vince maybe about a week ago. And he was saying, hey, D, don't be corny, dude. Some of your stuff's corny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? And then he goes back and he says, oh, actually, no, it's pretty cool. And I said, you better say Mogali's putting it on there. And he goes, oh, no, no, it's real cool, man. It's real cool. That's hilarious. You know? so, um, I'm, I'm getting in. The, I learned from these guys. They're, they're shooting videos, and videos are powerful, 10-second yes. videos. And uh, we have a guy that's starting to do our videos, and we put a few up. Man, we got 46,000 views, man. Wow. Where did you put it? On what platform? We put it on Facebook. That's amazing. And I guess it transferred over to Instagram, I think. You should do, if you, you seem like a very, you know, you're very well versed in the whole bread and dough making process and you should do a YouTube channel. Oh man, I know. You know what? When I, I promise Bruce, when I get a little bit more time, brother, I'll do it. All right. Cause that, that I would like to learn from you. Like I would love to go to YouTube and see how you make your see how you make your dough and how you make your different style of pizza because yeah. Facebook and Instagram is great like in the moment, but sometimes those videos get so lost in the feed and to go search them is hard. Yeah, man, I get a lot of questions, you know, and, I, and, and sometimes people get a little pissed. They want this straightforward answer on how to make dough, but I get a lot of questions on dough and I answer them. And then I have a lot of my answer a lot of times. Well, it depends, right? You know, it depends. And even my guys that text me my, that I'm close to and they say, D, you know, what's up with this and this? Well, it depends. 
I'm like, damn it, just tell me an answer. I got to get this stuff done. You know? Yeah, there's no definitive answer right away. Sometimes it's not, you know, it's like saying, you know, you know, the temperature exactly is this and this, you know, it depends on the dough, it depends on the water, it depends right. on, you know, what's the temperature of your oil? What are you doing with this? And, you know, anything you can measure, measure. So it gets crazy, man. Yeah. Well, you, yeah. When you have more time, I might get on you and maybe make you do those YouTube videos. I would love to go watch those and yeah, research man, that. Fun. All fun. right. Um, Derek, we'll link up everything in the show notes. Mia Marco's website, Mia Marco's Pizza on Instagram, Derek's Facebook page, all that in the show notes for Smart Pizza Marketing. Uh, don't hang up yet. We're just going to end the podcast there. Go check out smartpizzamarketing.com for everything we mentioned on the show. Great and Derek, side, thank man. you so much for joining me, man. It was great talking to you. Thank you, brother. Have a good one. God bless y'all.